Good Times is an American sitcom that graced CBS screens from February 1974 to August 1979. Over its six-season run, the show delivered a total of 133 episodes. Created by Eric Monte and Mike Evan and produced by the legendary Norman Lear, it held the distinction of being the first African-American two-parented family sitcom. Notably, Good Times was the inaugural television spin-off derived from another spin-off. In 2020, it was announced that the show would be animated, with production falling under the banner of Sony Pictures Animation. This classic series, Good Times, holds a special place in television history, capturing the hearts of audiences during its time. The show boasted a remarkable ensemble cast. However, life's passage has seen some of these beloved cast members depart from this world. In this video, we will pay tribute to and remember some of the cast members of Good Times who have since passed away. Be sure to engage with our channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing to stay updated with our content. Esther Rowley Esther Rowley, one of the leading actors from the family sitcom Good Times, made a lasting impact on both television and film. Known for her portrayal of a feisty maid in the popular television sitcom Maud and her role as the strong-willed matriarch in the spin-off situation comedy Good Times, she left an indelible mark on the industry. On November 17th, at the age of 78, Esther Rolla passed away at a Los Angeles hospital, following an extended illness, as confirmed by her publicist, Pat Tobin. While the specific cause of her passing was not disclosed, her legacy as an actress who challenged black stereotypes in Hollywood endures. Throughout her career, Esther Rolla fearlessly took on roles often typecast for African-American actresses. She notably played maids in Norman Lear's productions, including Maud and Good Times. Her portrayal in the television movie Summer of My German Soldier earned her an Emmy, reflecting her dedication to breaking barriers and paving the way for others. Describing her strong-willed personality, Norman Lear, the renowned producer, remarked, Wherever she was, you knew she was there. The woman had strong conviction. We may not have agreed on everything, but that is what happens when you have two creative minds at work. In the world of theater, Esther Roll graced the stage as a retired maid in the classic A Raisin in the Sun. Her talent extended to the big screen, with roles such as that of a housekeeper in Driving Miss Daisy and in John Singleton's poignant film, Rosewood. She also had a part in poet Maya Angelou's directorial debut film, Down in the Delta, scheduled for release the following month. Esther Rolle's contributions to entertainment reached far and wide, leaving a legacy of representation and excellence. Janet Dubois. Janet Dubois, renowned for her role as the local gossip and close friend of the Evans family, Willona Woodson, in the beloved sitcom Good Times, was discovered deceased at her Glendale, California home on Tuesday. Her passing marks a significant loss with the Pan African Film Festival, a venture she co founded, expressing that she would be profoundly missaid. According to her family, the actress's unexpected demise occurred while she was peacefully sleeping, and she was believed to be around 74 years old. Beyond her iconic portrayal as the Evans family's neighbor in the 1970s sitcom, Janet Dubois left her mark in both the film and television realms. Her credits included appearances in notable productions such as Roots, Keenan Ivory Wayans' I'm Gonna Get You Sucka, and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, in which she portrayed Mama Bosley. However, Janet Dubois was not only recognized for her acting, but also for her legendary voice. She composed and lent her vocals to Movin' On Up, the iconic theme song for the Jeffersons. Additionally, she provided the voice for Mrs. Avery in The PJs a role that earned her two Emmy Awards and played Mrs. Patterson in As Told by Ginger. Albert Reed Jr. Albert Reed, known for his role as the dubious and disputable local politician Fred C. Davis on the family sitcom Good Times, was the first cast member from the show to pass away in real life. 
He passed away in 1986 at the age of 76. In addition to his work on Good Times, Reed had a recurring role on the children's adventure series The Secret of Isis. As Dr. Joshua Barnes and made guest appearances on The Jeffersons and Sanford and Son. On Sanford and Son, he portrayed Grady Wilson, a cousin of Fred's, for a single episode. Moreover, Reed played Lieutenant Ned Ordway in the original Airport movie, a role that echoed his real life career as he served with the security division at Los Angeles International Airport from 1959 to 1983 ultimately becoming the Chief of Security from 1979 to 1983. This security division later evolved into what is now known as the Los Angeles Airport Police. Theodore Wilson. Teddy Wilson, known as another cast member of the sitcom Good Times, passed away at the age of 47 due to a stroke. His acting career was marked by various television and movie roles, including playing Earl the Postman in That's My Mama, starring as Phil Wheeler on The Sanford Arms, and making appearances in TV shows such as Crazy Like a Fox, The Red Fox Show, Roll Out, and You Can't Take It With You. In addition to his television work, Wilson had notable film credits, including Life Stinks, That's My Life, A Fine Mess, The River Niger, Carney, The Hunter, and the upcoming Blood In, Blood Out. He also made guest appearances on television series like Quantum Leap, L.A. Law, and Gabriel's Fire. Furthermore, he was a member of New York's Negro Ensemble Company in the world of stage acting. Teddy Wilson's diverse contributions to entertainment will be remembered. Moses Gunn. Moses Gunn, who portrayed the character Carl Dixon on the family sitcom Good Times, where he played a significant role as a love interest for Florida Evans following John Amos's departure, appeared in just one season of the show back in 1977. The accomplished actor Moses Gunn, celebrated for his versatility ranging from Shakespeare in plays to comedic situations, passed away at the age of 64 due to complications of asthma, according to his agent, Richard Bauman. Gunn had battled illness for approximately six months before his passing at his home in Guilford, Connecticut. Throughout his career, Moses Gunn earned acclaim and recognition, including two Obie Awards for his stage performances with the Negro Ensemble Company and NAACP Image Awards for his roles in the Los Angeles Theater Center, production of Fool for Love, and his supporting role in the 1980 film Ragtime. He received a Tony nomination in 1976 for The Poison Tree and an Emmy nomination for his portrayal of the African chief Kintango in the landmark miniseries Roots. Gunn's talents extended to television, with his portrayal of Moses Gage in the short-lived series Father Murphy and guest appearances on popular shows such as The Cosby Show, Hill Street Blues, Amen, and Equal Justice. Born in St. Louis on October 2, 1929, he earned degrees from Tennessee State University and the University of Kansas Lawrence. Gunn's illustrious career spanned nearly three decades on the professional stage, where he graced audiences with his performances in over a dozen productions of Shakespeare plays, including Romeo and Juliet at the New York Shakespeare Festival. Moses Gunn is survived by his wife, Gwendolyn, his daughter, Kirsten Landis Mudd, and his son, Justin Moses Gunn. In lieu of flowers, his family requested that contributions be made to the Amistad Foundation, Wadsworth Athenaeum, 600 Main Saint, Hartford Con, 06118, Attention Barbara Hudson. Moses Gunn's legacy in the world of entertainment remains a lasting testament to his remarkable talents. Mike Evans Mike Evans, another beloved cast member from the iconic show Good Times, has left us, marking a profound loss in the world of entertainment. Mike Evans, best known for his portrayal of Lionel Jefferson in the TV comedy series All in the Family, and its spin-off The Jeffersons, passed away at the age of 57 due to complications from throat cancer. He peacefully departed on December 14th. While at his mother's residence in 29 Palms, 
as confirmed by his niece, Crystal Evans. In a significant contribution to the world of television, Evans, in collaboration with Eric Monty, co-created and wrote for Good Times, a groundbreaking TV comedy series featuring a primarily black cast. His impact on the industry extended beyond acting, demonstrating his creative prowess. Born as Michael Jonas Evans in Salisbury, N.C. in March 1949, he hailed from a family where his father, Theodore Evans Sr., practiced dentistry, and his mother, Annie Sue Evans, was an esteemed school teacher. The family relocated to Los Angeles during Evans' childhood, setting the stage for his journey in the entertainment world. Evans pursued his passion by studying acting at Los Angeles City College, laying the foundation for his illustrious career. His breakthrough came with the role of Lionel Jefferson in the 1970s situation, comedy all in the family. As the character Lionel, he transitioned seamlessly to The Jeffersons when the spin-off series debuted in 1975, showcasing the Jefferson family's move from Queens to Manhattan's East Side. Although he was briefly replaced by Damon Evans, no relation, for four years, Mike Evans later returned to the series, continuing to captivate audiences until 1981. In addition to his work on these celebrated series, Evans's talent extended to the 1976 TV miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man. He made memorable guest appearances on popular TV series like Love, American Style and The Streets of San Francisco. His final role graced the small screen in a 2000 episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. Mike Evans's influence reverberated beyond his performances. In later years, he turned his attention to real estate investments in Southern California, showcasing his diverse entrepreneurial spirit. Helen Martin. Helen Martin, celebrated for her iconic role as Weeping Wanda in the beloved sitcom Good Times, graced the world of entertainment with her remarkable talent. Her passing on March 25th in Monterey, CA, marked the end of a journey that touched the hearts of many. She left an indelible mark at the age of 90, becoming a symbol of resilience and artistic prowess. Helen Martin's career was a testament to her early involvement in the world of theater, even before the entertainment industry embraced people of color. Her Broadway debut in 1941, starring alongside Canada Lee in Orson Welles' production of Native Son, showcased her exceptional talent. The groundbreaking performance set the stage for her remarkable journey as she later toured with the show, bringing her artistry to the masses on the so-called subway circuit and across the provinces. Her contributions extended beyond Broadway as she became a founding member of the American Negro Theater in 1940. Her appearances in productions like Strivers Row, Three's a Family, and Hits, Bits, and Skits exemplified her versatility as an actress. She continued to grace the world of entertainment with her presence in radio, film, and television, including her role as a neighbor in the TV sitcom 227. Helen Martin, a native of St. Louis, embarked on her artistic journey at Fisk University. Her talents eventually took her across the country as she performed in various stock productions. Beyond U.S. borders, she made her mark in London by appearing in Deep Are the Roots, a role she had previously played in New York. Her impressive list of Broadway appearances included titles like Take a Giant Step, The Long Dream, Period of Adjustment, Pearly Victorious, My Mother, My Father, and Me. She even graced off Broadway as a replacement in Jean Genet's The Blacks. Throughout her career, she defied the limitations imposed on black actresses of her time and found richer and more diverse opportunities as the world evolved. Her outstanding achievements also extended to the world of television, where she portrayed an elder in an African village in the landmark TV miniseries Roots. Additionally, she took on various guest roles in popular TV shows, including Benson, Full House, Good Times, and That's My Mama. Helen Martin's presence in the film industry left an indelible mark with notable roles in Hollywood Shuffle, Cotton Comes to Harlem, Repo Man, and her portrayal of Mama Doll, 
in Warren Beatty's film, Bullworth. As the world mourns her passing, it's worth noting that her final film, Something to Sing About, is expected to be released in the near future, adding a poignant final note to her remarkable career as reported by The Times, Raymond Allen. Raymond Allen, a beloved member of the cast of the family sitcom Good Times, is remembered with deep fondness. His recent passing on Monday marked the end of a remarkable life as he battled respiratory issues. At the age of 91, his legacy in the world of entertainment lives on. His daughter, actress Taronza Allen, shared the heartbreaking news with their friends and family through a heartfelt Facebook post. She conveyed the news with touching words, stating, Just wanted to let the Allen family and friends know that Dad received his wing two hours ago. She expressed that her father's warm heart, kind spirit, and his distinctive sayings would be dearly missed. She remembered his infectious laughter and wished for him to find eternal peace. In addition, the day was filled with both love and sorrow as they also lost their cousin, Deborah Dahl. They now find solace in the comforting embrace of angels. Raymond Allen's health had been a concern, having been diagnosed with a bacterial infection in May. However, he had tested negative for COVID-19. For the past five years, he had been receiving care at a healthcare facility in California, grappling with pneumonia. Tragically, he was found unresponsive on Monday morning. During the show's run from 1972 to 1977, Raymond Allen made a significant impact by portraying Uncle Woody. His memorable role extended to a spin-off series titled The Sanford Arms. His career included work on well-known series such as The Love Boat, The Jeffersons, and his role in the documentary film Watt Stacks. He also appeared in What's Happening and portrayed Merle the Earl on Star Sky and Hutch. His dedication to acting continued until 1985 when he stepped away due to health-related issues. Raymond Allen's legacy lives on through his daughters, Tarrance and Brenda Allen, who continue to cherish his memory. Richard Ward Richard Ward's contributions to the world of entertainment are remembered with respect and admiration. He made a lasting impact during his guest appearances on Good Times, where he portrayed Henry, James Evans's father. In the show, Henry had left James's mother and siblings when James was younger. Richard Ward's journey began on March 15, 1915, in Glenside, Pennsylvania. He initially pursued a career as a prize fighter, relying on his burly physique and raspy voice. His time in the boxing ring saw around 30 victories as both a professional and amateur fighter. However, he eventually decided to change his path, transitioning to the police force, where he served as a New York police detective for a decade. Following his career in law enforcement, Ward pursued a new calling in acting. His television debut occurred in 1950 on The Perry Como Show, marking the beginning of his acting journey. He gained recognition through appearances on dramatic anthology series like Playhouse 90, Studio One, and Hallmark Hall of Fame. As the years went by, he became a familiar face in the realm of 70s sitcoms, with notable roles in series such as Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, All in the Family, and The Jeffersons. One of his significant roles was on Good Times, where he portrayed Henry, James Evans's estranged father. This character added depth and complexity to the storyline. However, the pinnacle of Richard Ward's career was marked by his portrayal of Willie Loman in the Baltimore Center Stage production of Death of a Salesman, directed by Lee Sankiewicz. Regrettably, Richard Ward passed away on July 1, 1979, at the age of 64. Ben Powers Alton Ben Powers Known for his portrayal of Keith Albert Anderson, Thelma Evans's husband, during the sixth and final season of the CBS sitcom Good Times, has left a void in the world of entertainment. His family announced his passing on April 6th in New Bedford, Mass., although the exact cause of death remains undisclosed. Powers' acting career included a regular role as Moochie on the CBS detective drama series 
Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer from 1984 to 1985. He showcased his talent in various film projects with notable appearances in Cheech and Chong's next movie, 1980, where he played a small part, and subsequent collaborations with the iconic comedy duo in Things Are Tough All Over, 1982. He also graced the screen in The Man Who Loved Women, 1983, a film starring Burt Reynolds. In addition to his film work, Powers made guest appearances on television shows such as Gimme a Break, Flamingo Road, The Greatest American Hero, and Laverne Amp Shirley. Born in Brooklyn and raised in Providence, Rhode Island, Alton Ben Powers initially pursued his artistic talents at the Rhode Island School of Design, focusing on painting and sketching. However, his path ultimately led him toward the world of acting. Before gaining recognition, Powers honed his skills by performing stand-up comedy routines in Providence. His acts included impressions and songs, eventually catching the eye of a Hollywood agent during one of his performances. This opportunity propelled his career, leading to gigs at the Playboy Clubs in Los Angeles, New York, and Boston. In 1977, he secured a role in the revived version of Laugh-In. Ben Powers is survived by his mother and sisters, Yvonne and Maya. Mary Alice. Mary Alice as Loretta Simpson in the episode The Baby, Season 3, Episode 7. The Emmy and Tony-winning actress Mary Alice has passed away. A spokesperson for the NYPD confirmed to NPR that she peacefully departed due to natural causes at her residence in New York. She was 85 years old. In the series A Different World, Mary Alice portrayed the endearing and softly spoken Letty Sia, Letty Bostick. Her illustrious career encompassed over a dozen film credits, including memorable roles in films like Sparkly in 1976, Malcolm X in 1992, and The Matrix Revolutions in 2003. In an interview with contemporary film Theater Namp, Television, Mary Alice expressed her pride in being an actor, stating, I chose this profession because I feel this is how I can fulfill my service as a human being, communicating the human condition. My desire is to create interesting and complex characters on film and television. Mary Alice's contributions to the world of acting continue to be celebrated. We greatly appreciate your viewership and would like to express our gratitude. To stay updated with our future content, please consider subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications. We look forward to having you with us in our upcoming videos. Thank you for your continued support and engagement.